launched their new game, Infinite Recharge, and it combines elements of Star Wars with traditional first elements, and it's going to make for a pretty cool and compelling game. Yeah, unfortunately for Team RA 3D 1.0, we're not going to build a robot this year. There's been a series of unfortunate events in the last weeks or so, um, so we're not going to be able to build a robot, unfortunately. Well, we do want to push you in the right direction and be able to show you some of the experience uh, that this group has had. All together, from our experiences, we want to make sure we share the best attributes from years prior and make sure that we can set you up for success for this year's team. Yeah, and also as this program has grown, there's going to be about a dozen other robots built in three days. So we're talking about putting together a compilation video uh, from some of the best concepts that are out there. Uh, but we also want to caution you here. We barely even read the rules. Kind of, uh, we skimmed it like we normally do. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, Make so some assumptions from our years past. As we talk about the game pieces, these are going to be things that have worked for uh, robots in the past. But it's really up to you to decide whether or not they're completely legal. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of the ways that you can score in this game. Building a robot is super fun, but first you have to really understand the game to know what you're building the robot for. So we analyzed the game and came to three major elements in Infinite Recharge. Wheel of Fortune. Yep. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune. fortune. Uh, generator switch is the... Not a teeter-totter. Not a totter. Not a totter. Not a totter. AKA... Okay. Fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Of the three game elements that we identified, two of them are old elements that we've seen before and one that's brand new. But let's start off with the old stuff. Let's talk to Barry about the power cells. Uh -huh. hey. Oh, hi. There have been many years where First Robotics Competition has been using balls as the scoring element. And you always have to be able to pick them up off the ground, store them, collect them, get them to the shooter, and shoot them into some goal. Let's look at some previous years to draw from inspiration. 2006 had just a field full of robots that were able to pick up balls, index them, and shoot them high. Here's Team 86 using their polycord grabber as well as indexer, and here you can just see a fury of balls going into the aim high goal. In 2012, you had 118. They used a single roller with a V shape inside of their robot to get it to their polycord intake. And here, this video is able to show what happens inside of that intake as it brings it to the single wheel shooter. In 2016, we had Team 701, and they had a really interesting grabber mechanism that had horizontal polycord that was able to help get the ball so when they grabbed it it brought it to the center of their robot that they were then able to use their indexer to bring it to their double wheel shooter. 188 had a very interesting robot where it had an over the bumper grabber so it starts out inside of the robot goes to the outside and grabs onto the ball and it comes over the bumper also is very low profile so if you're looking to build a low robot take a look at team 188. 2016 RA3D 1.0 team made a Modulox shooter and the really cool thing about this is that it's really easy to make and we created an entire video after a real video that year talking about this shooter. The cool thing about a double wheel shooter is you can vary the RPMs on both of the different sides of the wheel so you can shoot at different angles because you can vary the trajectory of the shot. Now let's look at the second game element that we've seen before which is hanging on the generator switch. Gabe's got some more info on that for you. The balancing aspect of the generator switch is something new we haven't seen yet, but we've seen hanging before, so let's check them out from previous years. Gompei is one of those teams that have a simple design for a hook that reaches up to the bar and gradually secures that climb with a self-ratcheting system that locks itself in place. You'll see it deploy shields to prevent other teams from climbing on the bar. Techhounds were notable on using a similar mechanism in which a hook with a motor and wheel on top of it is able to latch onto the bar. This allows them to move back and forth in the bar for defense, but for this year's game would be ideal in balancing and leveling on the generator switch. You can also use a robot with two arms that are rigid that allow it to be able to climb with one 
and a passive arm to lock it in place, preventing the robot from swinging back and forth. This will be critical in keeping the generator switch balanced as you continue your climb. And the third and final element that we wanted to talk about is a brand new element, that control panel. And Mike Walker has a pretty interesting way to talk about it. Lego League kids use color sensors. You can too. You can do better. Perfect. After we've analyzed those three game elements, typically what you do is design a robot real simply, start prototyping and building. We're not going to build a robot this year like we said before, but we did do the sketching and design part. And here's Dan showing us what we affectionately call the Frankenbot. If we were trying to build a really simple robot, um, one of the trickier things to do is to acquire those balls off the ground. But there is a human loading station which may allow the heights to, to try to get some of those balls into a hopper. So the first thing that we probably look at is using that ramp to acquire balls from the human players Drop the ball in, have it down, roll into a hopper. You'd have a low shooter, singular conveyor that would move it forward into the shooter. Put where you just have the roll, balls roll in. In this case, if they were sideways like this, I definitely would use a two wheel shooter. Uh, so hitting that inner goal is probably gonna be a little bit more difficult uh, than if you were building up higher. The other thing that we would definitely have on this robot would be some sort of hook so that you have a, a gripper that goes around and then you can use your drivetrain back and forth to help balance with your partner. Um, you don't have to lift very high, you just have to lift high enough to balance. Singular uh, linear movement. Your CG's up at here, you're going to hang down like this. So that means with your specific geometry of where your CG is located also going to be dependent on how you decide to hang. So that's the Franken robot, that's a simple robot. So those are some of our thoughts about Infinite Recharge this year. We've got some concepts up here, we're showing a lot of clips from old robots, trying to impart some of that knowledge that we've gained over the last 20 years in this program. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what the other robot and 3 day teams do. Uh, but this year, this is what we're providing, and hopefully it can point you to some of those other great resources that come out over the next week. But I'm going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs>